<laughs> so Stephanie, thanks so much for joining me. I'm here with Stephanie Nils, and um, it was great playing with you. We've got a little bit of video footage of your show and you singing. Um, some of your original music we played earlier at the Thirsty Ear in Columbus, Ohio. I've known you for a few years. You first came to my Creative Strings workshop, I don't know, maybe like three or four years ago? Three years ago, yeah. And then you, of course, were a classically trained pianist. I think you went to Juilliard, if I'm not mistaken, or Manhattan School. CIM. CIM, oh, Cleveland Institute Cleveland, of Music, yeah. which is, yeah. And so you're a really heavy uh, classical pianist. You've been featured on On the Top, and you were in New York City. Um, and then you came to the string workshop and you decided that you wanted to start touring. I mean, how did that come about that you decided you wanted to start touring? Um, as a songwriter, I no longer wanted to live in New York City, but I didn't know where I wanted to live. So I thought, you know, maybe I could get in a car and just kind of move around and uh, kind of figure out where I wanted to live next. Uh, but, you know, the playing and the singing or, or songwriting was a way to, to make money along the way on the road. Um, so I, I did that for, you know, it's been about two years now, <laughs> and I'll, uh, do it for the next five years, ten years or so, um, so that's just, there's really no plan, it's just an adventure. How did you go from being like a really heavy classical pianist into writing your own, uh, songs? Mm -hmm. Uh, I got bored, so, <laughs> uh... He was just, I think it was very unhappy playing music that was written 150 to 300 years ago by people that I had never met and that had no effect necessarily on the socio-political environment that I was a part of as a citizen. Um, so I, uh, I don't know, kind of started fooling around with different riffs on the piano and the guitar and, and then singing along and, and there was just, you know, some sort of connection I guess that happens with all songwriters, whether you intend for it to happen or not. Um, and I sort of put those together and turn them into songs, and then sometimes not songs. <laughs> and then they kind of, you know, snowball. So that's about it. Well, I notice a lot of your songs have kind of a political commentary, right? Would right. you say? Yeah. And yeah. how did you string together tours for yourself? Um... <laughs> You just, it's hard to explain. I think with the touring, you just kind of have to do it and, and see what happens and you make your connections along the way. Um, but, you know, you contact people on the internet or you call them on the phone or sometimes you're in a place. There's been a couple times where um, I don't have a night off or whatever, so I'll go to a town and, and kind of talk to people on the street and say, you know, where's their live music? And uh, and they'll say, oh, this place. You know, I'll go to that place and say, can I set up a microphone in the corner and play for tips? And they'll say, knock yourself out. <laughs> so I'll do that. And then at least do steady gig or whatever. So it's, um, I think the gigs come in all shapes and sizes, but you just kind of have to go out there and try it for yourself generally. And, I mean, it was just two years ago was probably like the first time that you even booked a gig. Yeah. On the road or anywhere. Mm -hmm. And now how much are you on the road? Uh, always. <laughs> this has been about since August. So I was in about five months, six months of just constant touring. And a, a year before that of sporadic touring. Um, so, yeah, it's just a, a constant experience and a learning experience, I think, for that matter. Well, I think it's really gutsy. That you just yeah, like you. dropped everything and just started calling people <laughs> and just going out and playing anywhere. I mean, that to me is like a totally inspirational, motivational story for any like just kind of creative musician. I mean, because you just you've got your keyboard, you've got your car, and you, you got your basically your BlackBerry. Right. <laughs> and you're constantly just calling people yeah. and just saying, "Can I play?" And you're just right. playing anywhere. I think it's totally, uh, really like, I don't know. It's like a very organic. I hate to use that word, but organic way of doing right. things. It yeah. Just you know, so many people don't have the, the guts to actually do that. So, right. well, I mean, there's this as you go out onto the road, you find that there's this whole kind of network of sort of underground railroad of, of indie, you know, music or, or folk music or, or jazz or whatever it is that is just kind of out there that you have to discover. And it's not necessarily in the mainstream media, and it's not necessarily on the internet. <laughs> it doesn't have a buzz to it, but I think the locals and the various towns kind of recognize it and support it, and so you just kind of have to find those networks and, and 
and become a part of them as if you were a local and sort of you know go from there now after being in New York for a long time you said you're thinking about moving to New Orleans why is yeah. that um, it's a very uh, local oriented uh, artistic and musical town so